Hi everyone, I'm Michael Gordon. A week ago, Russia sent ground forces into Ukraine. And since then, we've seen a strong response from other nations who have placed sanctions and other restrictions to try and put economic and political pressure onto Russia. It's obviously a sad situation and it's been quite unnerving for international markets as well. We've seen some big swings in share markets, in currencies and in commodity prices. We've had a lot of questions about what that will mean for the New Zealand economy. And we put out a note with our thoughts on that earlier this week. Now, obviously, we can't predict all of the moves that will happen in this conflict. But in terms of the fairly direct linkages, it looks like most of the consequences for us will be inflationary ones. And that's coming on top of all the other inflationary forces we're dealing with at the moment. In terms of direct trade links, New Zealand's exposure to the region is quite low. Last year, Russia took about 0.4% of our exports, most of which was dairy products, which can be uh, sent on to other markets. Indeed, it's important to note that after the Crimean invasion in 2014, Russia responded to sanctions by putting a ban on food imports from many Western nations and worked on building up its self-sufficiency in food. So it no longer has all that much influence on world markets as a buyer. As a producer, however, it's another matter. Both Russia and Ukraine are big producers of wheat uh, and of some of the raw materials that go into making fertilizer. So fears that the supply of those could be disrupted have sent their prices surging in the last week. And that'll add to the cost of producing food worldwide. New Zealand's pasture-based farmers will benefit from that to some degree, but consumers here will still be exposed to the effect that it has on world prices. And then, of course, there's energy. Uh, Russia is a big exporter of oil and gas. And again, fears of supply disruptions have sent prices surging higher in the last week. So all of this just deepens the dilemma for the Reserve Bank. Obviously, they can't do anything directly about oil prices. But their concern is that in the right conditions, these global price shocks can flow through into local price setting behavior on an ongoing basis. So the risks are still towards interest rates having to go even higher, at least for a period of time. Talk to you next week.